This is part four in our series of lectures on other forms of induction. And in this uh, lecture, we're going to do an, an example of a proof using the principle of complete induction. Here's the one that we're going to do. It concerns the Fibonacci numbers that we introduced in the previous video. If you consider the equation x squared equals x plus 1, and you solve it using the quadratic formula, you'll discover that the roots of it are 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2. We're going to let alpha denote the bigger of those two roots, and beta denotes the smaller of the two roots. If you actually calculate them, you'll see that alpha is something like 1.6, and beta is actually negative. We use the letter F sub n to denote the nth Fibonacci number, and your exercise is to prove that F sub n is less than or equal to alpha to the n minus 1. In doing that, you're going to have to make use of the following facts. Of course, you have to use the defining property of the Fibonacci numbers, and this is how they were defined. F sub 1 is 1, F sub 2 is 1, and all subsequent ones are defined by adding the previous two together. Remember, we've said that alpha and beta are the roots of this equation, so that means in particular that alpha squared is equal to alpha plus 1. You may get some use out of that fact in the proof. Um, of course, you have this explicit formula for alpha, but you'll find that your solution is a little bit more elegant if at the appropriate time you make use of this fact rather than this explicit formula. So I'd like you to put your video on pause for a moment and write down at least the first couple of sentences of the proof, the one where you introduce the appropriate set S and you indicate uh, what it is you're intending to do in the proof. Well, this is what I had in mind. You should start the proof by telling me that your set S is the set of all natural numbers such that f sub n is less than or equal to alpha to the n minus 1, and that you're going to use the principle of complete induction to prove that s is equal to all of the natural numbers. So now, see if you can write down the proof of the basis step of this result. Put your video on pause and give that a try. Well, here's how I've written the basis step. I begin by proving that 1 and 2 are elements of S. The reason I do that is because F sub 1 and F sub 2 are defined differently from the subsequent terms of the sequence of Fibonacci numbers, so you really have to single them out and deal with them separately. So I put those both in the basis step. Um, so why do we have that 1 is an element of S? We have to verify that F sub 1 is less than or equal to alpha to the 1 minus 1 is 0. We have to verify that F sub 1 is less than or equal to 1, and that's certainly true because F sub 1 is equal to 1. We also have to verify that 2 is an S. In other words, F sub 2 is less than or equal to alpha. Well, now we're going to use the fact that alpha is roughly around 1.6 and f sub 2 is 1. And so using that fact, we know that f sub 2 is smaller than alpha to the 2 minus 1 because 1 is smaller than alpha. Now we come to the inductive step. That one takes a little bit more work. Put your video on pause and see if you can complete the proof of the inductive step. Here's my proof of the inductive step. I begin by giving myself a natural number. And now, remember I, I warned you that at the beginning of the inductive step, you should tell the reader, you should include a statement about what is the smallest value of n that has not as yet been shown to lie in s. So we've shown that 1 and 2 lie in s, so she, we should suppose that n is at least 3, and we should assume that the set of predecessors of n is a subset of s, at least the predecessors that are natural numbers. 
So now since n is at least 3, that means that n minus 1 and n minus 2 are both natural numbers, and therefore they lie in the set. And that means that they are, that means that f sub n minus 1 and f sub n minus 2 um, are smaller than the appropriate power of alpha. In other words, f sub n minus 1 is less than or equal to alpha to the n minus 2, and f sub n minus 2 is less than or equal to alpha to the n minus 3. That's what it means to say that n minus 1 lies in this set S, and n minus 2 lies in the set S. Now using this fact, we need to deduce that this happens. So I'm not going to write this entire thing down. I'm going to start on the left side, so that's what I do here, and I'm going to prove ultimately that it's smaller than or equal to alpha to the n minus 1. So I do that by writing down what is the definition of f sub n. It's defined to be this. Now I use the fact that I've um, that this is smaller than or equal to this, and this is smaller than or equal to this. Now, you have to algebraically rewrite this so that you get what you want. So what I do is I factor out alpha to the n minus 3 from this, and if I do that, when I divide this by alpha to the n minus 3, I get alpha, and when I divide this by alpha to the n minus 3, I get 1. Well, now I use the fact that alpha plus 1 is equal to alpha squared. And now when you simplify this, you see you get exactly alpha to the n minus 1. So I've proved that f sub n is less than or equal to alpha to the n minus 1. And so that proves that n is an element of s. So now I have the right to say that it follows from the principle of complete induction that s is equal to the set of all natural numbers. Well, here's a little exercise that I'm going to leave you with. This is a very famous formula. Even though the Fibonacci sequence is defined inductively, it's actually possible to write down a formula for the nth term in closed form. And the remarkable fact is that it turns out to be equal to this. Remember, alpha and beta are these irrational numbers, and yet f sub n is going to be a natural number for every single n, so it seems rather surprising that when you calculate this, that will come out to be a natural number at all. But in fact, it's true, and it's a good exercise using principle of complete induction to prove that this formula is correct for all natural numbers n. I'm going to leave that to you as an exercise.